The fourth phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe was a bit lackluster and inaudible for fans. Of course, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is still to be released, and we hope it lives up to expectations and becomes the cheering top of Phase 4. Also, the past San Diego Comic-Con showed that the studio bosses aren't sitting idly by. They worked on their box and slightly altered the release schedule of their films. The key change was the postponement of the third installment of the adventures of Ant-Man and the Wasp. And now we will see their adventures half a year earlier, in February next year. Unfortunately, the official trailer hasn't been released online yet, but you can already find the leaked footage from the Marvel Comic Con panel on the web. And we, of course, have taken a closed look at every frame of it and are ready to share the details. Hello! This is the non-spoiler channel, and in this video you will learn what have we been shown in the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailer, and will Khan the Conqueror be the main villain of the film? So, from the very beginning we hear the voice of Jonathan Majors, who will play Khan the Conqueror in the film. This genius scientist from the 13th century will be the main antagonist of the whole cartoon universe saga, but in the movie itself it's unlikely. But we'll come back to it a little later. Khan says, You're an interesting man, Scott Lan, and we see the film's protagonist, played by Paul Rudd, basking in the glory. After defeating Thanos, the Enterprise and Ant-Man was able to monetize his success. He wrote a book, Watch the Little Guy, in which he revealed that he played a key role in defeating the Purple Titan. Such popularity and attention did not caution his loved ones. His moment of fame, however, doesn't last long. Scott discovers that his daughter Cassie has stepped on the slippery slope just like he himself once did, and she's been arrested. By the way, Marvel Studios has changed the performer of the role of Cassandra Lan. She will now be played by Catherine Newton, star of Detective Pikachu. Most likely, this way the studio wants to attract more viewers. And what better way to do that than to bring another recognizable face to the franchise? Or perhaps Marvel has big plans for this character. It could be a standalone series about the heights, or it could be a movie or a series about the young Avengers too. Back to the trailer. Khan continues his monologue. In it he says that time is not really linear and that he perceives it in a very different way. At the same time we see the entire Pym family doing some kind of experiment in their lab. Ant-Man the Wasp, Hank Pym, Janet Van Dyne and Cassie Lane are all in the same frame. Of course it's pretty clear that things aren't going according to plan and the five of them are being pulled into the quantum dimension. According to insider information most of the movie will take place in this microworld. We will learn how it is organized, what laws it lives by, and more details about its inhabitants will be shown. Some of them are shown to us in the second half of the trailer. Then we see trio of main characters, Ant-Man, Wasp, and Casey Lan in their costumes like the movie poster. The focus shifts to Michelle Pfeiffer's character walking in some obscure place. What is known is that in this movie we learn more about exactly how Janet Van Dyne lived in a quantum dimension. Perhaps the place she is in is a city like Chronopolis, or it is. In the comics, Khan the Conqueror built it in the quantum dimension from pieces of worlds he had already conquered. And it may be this city that viewers noticed closely in one of the shots of the Ant-Man sequel. Next in the trailer we see one of the characters whose identity is not revealed to us. But he definitely knows Hank Pym's wife. This mysterious character is played by Bill Murray. And now it's time for some very interesting theories. Who exactly are we seeing on the screen? According to one version, Bill Murray could play a certain Kryler. Don't be surprised if you haven't heard of him and don't know who he is. Don't rush to look for him in the Ant-Man stories. After all, you certainly won't find him there. That's because Kryler first appeared in The Incredible Hulk 150. 56 in 1972. That was his first and only appearance. The character died before the end of the issue and was never remembered again. But his connection to Quantum Dimension is undeniable. In the comic book, Bruce Banner met Kryler in Microversa. In the film series, we know this world by a slightly different name, Quantum, where many things are possible, from the existence of cities to time travel. Accordingly, we are not surprised that there may be entire planets as from a planet called Kai, where Banner finds himself. Here he meets a scientist named Kryler, who has created a machine capable of creating the physical embodiment of any, even the deepest fear. Banner's main fear is the Hulk without control. It is this version of himself that he has to fight. Even if it's true that Murray plays the role of such an insignificant Marvel character as Kryler, he will be a great addition to the film. And his appearance in the film universe could be compared to Jeff Goldblum's appearance as the Grandmaster in Thor Ragnarok. And if the information from Insider Daniel Richman is confirmed, 
than Bill Murray's character could be even more interesting. So there's a post on Daniel's Twitter account that says there will be a flashback scene of Janet meeting Khan the Conqueror in Quantum World and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum World. Then she will feel him again in the present and call her family to help her defeat him. It's possible, then, that Murray's character could be Victor Timely. In the comics, Victor Timely is an alias adopted by Nathaniel Richards, a descendant of Mr. Fantastic Reed Richards, better known to all as Khan the Conqueror. Intriguing, isn't it? After losing the battle to the Avengers, Khan escapes to 1901, where he calls himself Victor Timely and founds a town in Wisconsin. For decades, he rules the city, often using robots as replacements for himself, as he continues to conquer the multiverse. These robots could even age, allowing Khan and his deputies to impersonate not only Victor Timely, but also Victor Timely Jr. and Victor Timely III over the years. And if this theory turns out to be true, we could see two different versions of Khan the Conqueror in the third Ant-Man movie. And it turns out that Janet Van Dyne was really familiar with this version of the villain for a long time. The character meeting near the end of the trailer looks very interesting. In this scene, Ant-Man says, I don't know who you are, but you made a mistake. I'm the Avenger. To which the villain replies, You're the Avenger. Haven't I killed you before? And that means that Khan's version of MZ movie has met the Avengers before and has already defeated them. Then Ant-Man and the Wasp have a huge problem. Due to the fact that Khan the Conqueror is declared the villain of the entire multiverse saga, it's very likely that he won't have much screen time in this movie. And the heroes themselves will meet him near the end of the film, and cut off with only mild scare, leaving the intrigue for the future. Remember, Marvel also gradually introduced Thanos into their film universe. But then a logical question arises. Who will be the main villain of Ant-Man 3? And we have the answer to that question. It will be someone who is officially set to appear in this film and make his full debut in the film universe, and who we were shown a glimpse of in the trailer. The Modok is a mental organism designed only to kill. Who will play the villain and how exactly he will be written into the story is unknown. But we have some thoughts on that too. Let's start with who can we see as Modok on the screen? There are rumors online that he will be played by Corey Stoll, the actor who played Darren Croce in the first Ant-Man movie, aka the Yellow Hornet. We are not shown the actual death of the character, so we can conclude that at the end he went to the quantum dimension and has undergone some changes. Hank Pym's wife also got superpowers after spending a long time in the quantum world. The role of Modok was also attributed to the same Bill Murray once it became known about the participation of the actor in the project. Then in the trailer we didn't see Kryler or Victor Timely, but George Tarleton, a technician at Advanced Idea Mechanics, which will bring the movie origins of this character closer to the canon story. Also some sources list Jim Carrey among the cast of the film. Seeing this, the entire fan community immediately linked him to Modok. But will the actor's recent announcement about ending his career turn out to be false and a mere PR move by the enterprising diehards in pursuit of extra hype and a desire to poo-poo? It's not clear yet, but agree that Modok played by Jaya Curry was interesting to watch. Personally, we think Khan and Modok will be directly linked in the new film. And most likely, Khan himself and his knowledge, technology and skills will help in the creation of Modok, and he will be just a pawn in Khan's game, at least in this movie. And the conqueror of worlds himself is thus only setting the stage and preparing the ground for the future of the film universe, particularly for the Avengers Khan Dynasty project. Multiple villains can be a challenge for superhero movies. Remember Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3? That's what made it a prime example of the problem of the number of antagonists in one story. So two villains on the level of Modok and Khan the Conqueror could play a cruel joke on the filmmakers, but with the right approach this can be avoided. So it seems to us that the studio won't take the obvious risks. Especially after not too conspicuous fourth phase, and one of the villains is likely to be relegated to the background, and obviously he'll become the conqueror and we'll see him towards the end of the film, where we find out that he's just the puppeteer who kept pulling the strings. We wonder what you think about it. Your ideas and thoughts write us in the comments to this video. And we will be waiting for more information on the movie and new promo materials. Subscribe to our non-spoiler channel and like us. Bye bye to you all!